Hey, everybody, it's Pete. Good morning. Welcome to a new episode of Today's Best Stock Picks. It's Wednesday morning, March 17th, 2021. Got a lot to talk about today. We're obviously going to be talking about the FOMC and how that influences uh, what's going to happen right now. Interest rates, even the slightest hit of mentioning interest rates going up spooks the market dramatically. So I think this week we've been a little bit um, less than fluid, despite the fact that we made new all-time highs again yesterday in the SPY. Uh, sold off a little bit intraday. Everybody's calling up panicking. So we're actually going to start uh, looking at the longer term trend of the SPY ETF specifically, the proxy for the S&P 500, and how we can very clearly, I'm going to give you two different ways, very clearly of identifying whether or not there's an actual change of trend. There's a, a lot of people in one or two days and the whole trend of the last year is gone. That's malarkey. <laughs> I don't know where I came up with malarkey from, but you're not going to change 12 months worth of buying in two days. The same way that when a stock is going down and you have two days of buying, that doesn't mean that the last six months of selling has disappeared. It's a start. It's a clue. It's putting those pieces together, but it's not a complete reversal. And I'm actually going to show you the window is pretty wide right now to call a reversal. And let's keep things in perspective, okay? We just made all-time highs yesterday. We sold off a little bit intraday yesterday. It was probably overdue. We haven't pulled back in roughly 10 days. It's a normal function of the market. I think that there's a lot of people, maybe you, <laughs> who have started trading when the market bottomed out a year ago, basically, and we've seen nothing but the market go up, and you're panicking just because it pulls back a little bit. This is a normal function of the market. It's actually very healthy for the market. Where profit-taking comes in, we get better opportunities to buy. And I'm going to actually show you a couple of trades today. By the way, we have 11 ideas, 11 stock picks for today that we're going to take a look at. And a couple of them are actually pulling back. And I'm going to show you where and what prices I'm looking to buy those stocks. First, we're going to talk about CrowdStrike earnings, um, excuse me, Lennar earnings. But we're going to start out with Plug Power. Uh, anytime you hear a company uh, restating accounting, that's a big issue. And the stock is actually down 20 percent right now. So it's actually a big deal. We're going to look to see if it's in a buy zone, look to see if it's even worth considering here. Very similar to what I talked about with the um, cannabis stocks and the electric vehicle stocks. The daily charts are not really what's going to tell me. What's going to tell me is the weekly charts because again, smart money commitments, deep pockets making uh, allocations of capital into your ideas. One day of buying that stock is not enough. We want to see a week. We want to see 10 days worth of buying where now it starts to see higher highs, higher lows, closing outside of the previous week. Then we have something special. Then we have something we could dig into a little bit because real money is allocated over 10 days. And now we're starting to see a reversal. If we see that happen, that's when we get involved. We don't bottom fish. You bottom fish, you're putting yourself in harm's way. You're getting in, in front of all of that smart money and you don't want to do that. You want them to say, okay, we're done. <laughs> now it's time to start jumping in and looking in the other direction. One other thing I want to point out, um, everything obviously that we do is for public, is, is for uh, public consumption. It's not investment advice or anything like that. It's for educational purposes. However, <laughs> what I do want to say to you, and we've never met, maybe I have met some of you, um, if the market is challenging for you, if you find that you don't have a good read on it, if you're not sure what's going on, I'm going to give you some advice. Stay in cash. <laughs> That's, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm telling you what not to do, which is a little bit different. If you are unclear of what the next move is in your favorite stock, if you're unclear of, of um, what you should be doing next, what is the next opportunity for yourself? First, I hope you joined the boot camp. I'd love to see you on the other side where I can walk you through this every day in a lot more detail. But be smart. Anytime you're not sure, stay in cash until you are sure because you have to justify the risk in exchange for profit potential. And if you're in a trade that you don't like anymore, you're in a trade that's moving against you, you're in a trade where you're freezing up, scale back. You don't have to hold your entire position. If you're uncomfortable in it, there's a reason. Something's happening based on the way you look at the markets where it's pulling back and you're just like, ah, I'm not really sure. There's nothing wrong with scaling back. You can always put those shares back on. Lower your risk profile, get your head back on straight, and then start to look for that position to either reassert itself or you get out completely. But get your head back on so you can make good planned out scripted decisions as opposed to um, when you buy a stock and you freeze and, and it's no longer in control. You never want to be in that situation. So we're going to head over to the charts. We're going to start out with the SPY. We're going to take a look at the bigger picture of the stock market. 
and then we're going to look at some individual stocks. Um, by the way, if, uh, if you find these videos helpful, if you get some value out of them, and especially if you make some money, give us a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, and make sure you get updates. Um, click down on the subscribe button. That would be awesome. But to take that even a step further, if you have questions about what we talk about, definitely click down and leave a comment below the video. I'd love to hear from you. We get back to everybody. All right. So we're going to take a look at starting with the SPY ETF. And this is the big picture that we're talking about. We're talking about the low off of March. Basically, the pandemic low, you can see we got crushed. And we've actually been working our way higher the entire time. And this is what I mean that most traders who started basically a year ago, almost a year ago to the day, actually, um, have not really experienced much of a pullback. We're seeing now where even intraday, <laughs> newer traders are panicking a little bit just because we have a little bit of selling. And you're going to see in a second, the long-term picture, this is how you properly draw trend lines. You don't go through any price on the way up, and then you see where the line broke at the highest spot. So this is technically the window the SPY is in right now, which is a gigantic window. We can't have a confirmed move to the downside, which a lot of people called about two weeks ago, which is not the case. It was only two days worth of selling. Um, so really right now, the, the, the levels you need to have are yesterday's high, which is let's just say 397.50 for argument's sake, uh, and 371.88. That's a giant window, but that is the actual window. This floating to the upside that we just recently had, now we need to go into um, the volume. Because if you actually take a look over here, remember the volume represents the commitments by deep pockets. That's what we're looking to follow what the deep pockets are doing, but we also want to confirm they're doing what we need to see in order to still have conviction to be long. This rally here, if we go here, was on very light volume, which preceded this big move to the downside, which had heavier volume. So now you have to put the pieces together. This is what real trading is. So you can see here, this rally into new highs, volume kept drying up. We're rallying again and volume is going down. It's still significant, but it's going down compared to these selling days. So these are the clues you have to put together. So now, what does that mean? What do we not want to see right now? What we don't want to see is selling down here on heavier volume. If we start to pull back a little bit, and generally I look to start looking for new opportunities around a 50% retracement level. So if we're talking from here to here, we're, we're probably talking like right around 385 would actually be a healthy pullback, maybe 392 if it holds strong. So this is actually, I want to come back on, this is actually pretty important. When we talk about buying and and profit taking. We're looking for a phrase that we call holding the bid. So if you could imagine a stock goes up and normally pulls back. So it's kind of normal, right? Push up and pull back, push up and pull back. That's a normal function of the market. So when it pushes up and goes sideways, that means they're holding the bid. That means buyers are still underneath that market and they're not letting it come down. They're holding the bid. They're still buying as there's more selling and it's going sideways. So if you could visualize the next chart you're looking at, when a stock goes up and pulls back versus a stock goes up and goes sideways, up and sideways actually is telling you that that's a stronger stock and the buyers are still there and not letting it come down. So whoever pushed it up is holding the bid. If the SPY holds the bid, and we'll go back to the chart now, you got a nice little visual. If the SPY holds the bid above that level, so if the, buy, the SPY holds the bid and maybe we stick around right around that 392 area for the next few days on lighter volume, again, going back to reading the tape, that's good. Then we can we can imply that price action and volume combination is going to lead to uh, higher prices. If we start to pull back, that's still okay, but not as high of a conviction level. But if we pull back on heavier volume, that changes. So there's three different scenarios. Remember, we just talked about you need to script your success when you're looking to buy stocks. We just gave you all three scenarios. So pulling back and breaking this line. Go, trading below that and then holding that as resistance, that would ultimately end up being a confirmed change of trend. So until that happens, this longer term trend is still valid. So now we're going to actually get into uh, plug uh, and really the key parts here, um, accounting errors. You never want to see accounting errors. They're going all the way back to 2018, 2019 uh, and restating their their quarterly filings for 2019 and 20. 20. It said that there's no misconduct, but look, the bottom line is everybody's looking at earnings and accounting is wrong. Something's going on, but is, I shouldn't say something's going on. Something happened to justify looking at it again. So now is plug stock a buy? Should you be looking to buy the stock? 
It's down just around 19% now. When I started the video, it was down 20, so it's really right around this area. So here's the thing I want to point out. Now, I already said that when stocks are pulling back, I tend to look at the da uh, the daily charts and then go to the weekly charts, and the weekly charts are really more the area. But there's something else that's important here. This is where the smart money, the deep pockets started shoving the stock higher, and that's proved by bullish gap, bullish gap, bullish gap, bullish gap, holding it up there. And look, they were holding the bid for a while until the story changed, and now we're seeing that manifest. So is this the news coming out now where it's being sold already prior to this, and do we bottom out here? So essentially what I'm saying is we have last week was a consolidation, but what was preceding that? The news came out after the stock sold off hard from 68 now down to 34 and change. Think about an earnings report as well, where you talk about a positive earnings report. What did the stock do prior to the earnings? If it's going higher and higher and higher and higher, and then they announced the earnings, it discounted the earnings. So the earnings came out, that news was already priced in, and then the stock sold off. And everybody's like, I don't understand, great earnings. Why did the stock sell off? because it was priced in already, it was anticipated prior to it, and the stock showed that. So is plug right now already discounting this bad news on the last three or four weeks after the stock was strong as a bull and one of the uh, better stocks to be looking at? I'm going to say yes. So I'm actually as it, looking for, not buying, looking for signs, and we'll talk about these over the next week or so, looking for signs for the stock to be bottoming out, looking for that price action volume scenario on the weekly chart and then we're going to start to look for that to play itself out so what does that mean i'm going to give you a quick visualization these are weekly charts it's monday through friday so while the stock pulled back over here this is what we want to see we want to see well bid higher highs higher lows closing on the highs on the weekly chart so we need this candlestick for example if this candlestick trades back up here above last week and closes strong, closes green and near the high, that's giving us clues that this bad news that just came out was already priced in. If we see an expansion in volume, smart money stepping back in and saying this is a, a steal at $34 to $40 or wherever it ends up unfolding. So that's the story of Plug right now, how we're going to be looking at it. A couple of other ideas that we have today. Again, don't forget FOMC today. On the opposite side of earnings, CrowdStrike, Really good earnings. They're up actually uh, $10.79 early here, um, over $207. So it's actually right back up to this breakout level. So today I'm looking at CrowdStrike over 208. Not perfect conditions, but the catalyst for earnings is changing the story. Lennar also came out. Actually pretty good earnings. It's up 1.5%, $1 $1.30. <clears throat> I'm looking at this over 92. One other one that I want to make sure is on your radar is Pulte Homes. You can see that I have my alert here. It said I actually had a buy stop yesterday set for 50-50 after the market opened. It did, it did not fire off the alert, so I still have the alert in there. Not doing anything yet, but you can see why there. Uh, Intel actually triggered. Um, semiconductor stocks were super strong yesterday. Intel actually triggered. We have a swing trade long. Uh, actually, it's, that's right at my price right now uh, where we got long, so I'm still comfortable in that idea. I like that setup quite a bit. Um, QFIN on the opposite side of the market where we actually had a good push up, a pause, looking for a breakout here as well. Uh, now we're going to get into a little bit different scenarios, which are some pullbacks. So again, very healthy part of the market, Caesars Entertainment, all of these casino stocks, had some really good news over the last week or so. Uh, you could actually see here that we pulled back. And now on this pullback, I am actually looking, ironically, I'm looking for a lower opening. So I'm looking for it to be right where it is now and push lower and find buyers at yesterday's low around 94. If we open flat and push higher, then I'm still going to enter the long and then use yesterday's low as the stop loss. However, for me, a better scenario is one more flush down, buyers step back in, and then we look to retest 106 to 110. Uh, RAD, if you haven't been watching this stock, oops, I'm typing it on the wrong screen. <laughs> RAD actually had a really good six or seven day run. Yesterday saw an expansion in volume. Stock petered out, got up to that $30, uh, $29 level. So here's the next trade that I'm looking for. You can see the level, the line of the sand that I have here. I'm looking for the stock to float higher, hold the bid, as I just explained to you, stay here and then make another run over 29. So we got to got to get it back up to that level a little bit. Uh, Starbucks. Starbucks actually bullish gap into all time highs, looking for some follow through here as well. Uh, can on our radar again, strong stock pulling back, looking for it to test 28. 
and then looking for a move higher. Again, yesterday's high, yesterday's low, big levels for active traders. Uh, and Boeing. Boeing is probably one of the better ideas that I'm looking forward to today between the rest of the week. I don't know if it's going to uh, give me the signal today, but I'm looking for Boeing around 250. So again, what's interesting here is I'm actually looking for a lower opening in these strong stocks. So there's strong stocks pulling back. I'm looking for them to push down. They've already started to pull back, so they didn't hold the bid. I'm looking for them to pull back now. Buyers to step back in. The, and what buyers? That's the big question. The buyers that pushed it up for the last two weeks in the first place. We're looking for them to come back, step in, get short-term signals, which again, I just gave you the idea is where I'm looking at that level, which right now is 250 in Boeing. If we get buying signals there, you don't just buy because it hits 250. You need price action to stop and say, okay, we stopped. <laughs> and now we're going to start to turn around. So you have a spot to manage risk. Remember, professionals manage risk first and then look for what they could make. That's the spot that I'm looking for in Boeing. So a lot going on today. Don't forget FOMC today. That's a big deal. Options expiration on Friday, which makes Friday afternoon a little bit tougher to trade. Uh, if you find these videos helpful, definitely click down and subscribe. Um, I'd really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up too, because it tells me that you like these kind of videos and you're getting value out of them. That would mean a lot to me. And don't forget, leave a comment below the video. If you have something you'd like to discuss, uh, definitely leave a comment down. We always get in touch with everybody. Uh, and if you want to come to the other side, you want to join me in the boot camp, click down and learn about that in the description too. Have a great day, everybody.